Purdy's performance, John, 37 pass attempts, which ties Jimmy Garoppolo for the second most pass attempts in a game by a Niner this year. He twice had 37 and uh, once had more this season. Pick 262. <laughs> um, I thought what was really stood out, a number of things stood out. One was how aggressive Kyle Shanahan was at the end of the first half, throwing the football with Brock Purdy, how aggressive he was. I mean, clearly he felt like touchdowns were going to be needed today. Um, when he went for the sneak on fourth and one, clearly in field goal range, and they got the second effort and they got it. Like he did not, I, I don't know. He, did you feel like he called the game like his backup quarterback was in there? No, I bet because I, you spend all week against this defense having a game plan. Ultimately, Purdy has a lot of similarities of Jimmy, right? I mean, he's not a huge arm guy. You're not going to be throwing bombs. I, I would imagine he just started calling the game plan. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I no, it didn't feel like he just got really conservative. Game plan, he John, he was, his game plan at the end of the first half is not usually that aggressive, right? No, but didn't they hit a big play to give him some yards? Yeah, but they did like the <clears throat> run play, and then they failed on a second down um, to get anything, and I kind of thought he was just going to sit on it at the end. And um, and after he missed Ayuk, I think that a third down, then he hit Jennings. So, <clears throat> Jennings play kind of gave him life. I, I no, I mean, once they got into you, you had to, part of two is you're the opponent you're playing. I mean, I understand it was a 10 10 game at that time, yeah, but guys had been wide open the first half, so you just go, God, if two has hit some of these plays, we might have to win this game 28 to 27. I, I do think the game dictated how he kind of kept his foot to the pedal there because it it had felt like Tyreek was open all game long, and if Tua was not, I mean, Tua was as bad as he's been. That was like throwback to it when he first got in the league. That was really weird. So I, I just thought that y- you couldn't play with the mindset of hold on for dear life Denver style. I wonder if that was his mindset coming into the game. They had been one of the more dynamic offenses in the league at any single moment, and you, the Niners got a taste of it with the first play of the game. They can score. I mean, where's that sure field when he was on the Niners? I mean, that was the sure field that Trey Lance loved in camp, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Sure? That was a sure field that Larry Fitzgerald told everyone. I'm telling you, he just get, ever gets an opportunity. I've seen him in practice for four years. You guys watch out. Uh, yeah, him and River Craycraft. At the end of the day, that was his only catch. It turned out for sure field. But um, tw- 25 of 37, 210, two touchdowns, one pick. As it turned out, the pick was uh, – a punt like it worked out pretty well actually that the ball that Xavier Howard intercepted it because it got him it cost the Dolphins like 22 yards whatever don't totally put if you're that was fourth and one right yeah you know I I I don't put that like Jimmy Garoppolo I put it a little more on Jimmy Brock Purdy like Kyle give him a situation with some basic routes I mean throwing a go route against a highly paid corner he was not open you know, that was the play call. I, I don't know if I love the play call there. <laughs> like, one thing about the couple plays that Kyle overturned. Fourth and four, fourth and four. The 49ers don't have many pass plays that are just like something within five yards that's not like the quick screen that's like third and two or fourth and one that's got to have it that is just like, that was pretty easy. That just got the Niners. It feels like they just run a play on fourth and one like they would on second and seven. It's kind of I would weird. say the McCaffrey touchdown at the end of the half was a pretty like automatic play, right? Wide open, that was easy. But they don't usually do that on fourth and short if it's not a quarterback sneak. Like they're no. it, when they do run a pass play, it usually becomes much more difficult to execute. I, I about, thought like he was he'd have moments where he was all over the map. He'd have throws where you go, This is kind of crazy. This is nuts. Like, this is really going to work. But then he'd have throws where, in rhythm, he'd make a great throw to Debo between two guys or Jennings over the middle or just kind of keep a play alive with his legs. The play at the end of the game when they didn't have any timeouts and Kyle, you know, was getting greedy, tried to do a little play action, dump off. It's not there. Bradley Chubb comes right. He just hit the ground. Like, that, was a, that was a four-year starter at a big-time yeah. program. Yeah. Smart play. Yeah. Honestly, that was one of his better plays of the game when you factor in IQ, I think. Yeah, I agree. How I, many rookie quarterbacks would have fucking done like an over their, you know, head thing? A hundred percent. Now he did that. Or uh, was that the first series? Jimmy might have thrown that. <laughs> Jimmy might have thrown it. The Jalen Phillips were, uh, he throws it over the middle of the field, like across his body, Favre style. Um, I thought all in all, he if I said, 
if I told you ahead of time, this is the game you're getting from Brock Purdy, you, you would have taken it 10 times out of 10. Facts. Right. You Facts. would have taken it. And I think you're right. For a rookie to have the game he had today, a rookie backup to play kind of like a fifth year guy was really impressive. And for him just to, I think it's easy. You know, you go back to camp. It was a battle with him and Sudfeld. And we talked a lot about like, which one of the guys are they going to keep? Right. And they ended up keeping both of them. Sudfeld still on the team too. But, and remember guy, they, I was going to say they, Jed gave Sudfeld $2 million. Jed gave him $2 million. Yeah. <laughs> so in that situation, usually that guy's a leg up, right? Right. But, but I mean, like you have to think like this guy can, this guy might play. And if Jimmy Garoppolo is your starter, once Trey Lance goes out, then you really know whoever our backup is might play. You have to really trust him because even though you don't ask him to do a lot in terms of throwing the ball down the field, you do ask him to do a lot. Yeah. Right. And, and I think we talk about it all the time, but the way the Niners run their offense with Jimmy is this Princeton style. It's going to take you 12 plays to get down the field and you need to get there's going to be a second and 10. There's going to be a ton of like third and sixes where you're asked to thread the ball over the middle. And I don't know. I got to pull it up here. The Niners felt like we're really good on third down today. Um, Especially throwing the football on third down. But, but, but they were eight of 19 on third down today. Yeah, Dolphins were 0 of 7. I, I thought he made multiple tight window throws. He threw multiple balls to Debo in tight spots. He threw multiple... How about McCaffrey just wide open down the sideline, John, and he just hit him. He just hit him, right? Yeah. How many times have you seen that play missed by Garoppolo? Croft, you know, he missed. He didn't even see Ayuk on one play where he was wide open in the red zone. But for the most part, for the most part, when they schemed him a play wide open, he just hit it. Croft was wide open on the one, I think it was third and two, that he got to Kittle. <clears throat> but I got no problem going to George on that one. It's right there. It's safe. George has the angle, got it. Because the Croft one, maybe you get a little too amped up. You throw it behind him. He was wide open. <laughs> I mean, wide open. And there was a play, I don't know if it was an incompletion, maybe a Ayuk miss that like McCaffrey came out at the last second and would have been a dump off, had a bunch of green grass. Again, there's a lot going on. I have. That was a red zone, yeah. He, McCaffrey was out to the top, and he threw it near side. No, this was McCaffrey was, like, up the middle. It oh, kind of okay. leaked out right at the end. But to me, I'd give the kid, like, a B, B plus. There were just a couple passes that were just not even in the ballpark. I think mainly do Ayuk. And Ayuk is like, I mean, you're talking like Marvin Harrison route runner, right? He's to a spot immediately. That, to, that individual is going to take some time. The other guys are kind of like hybrid unique not normal pieces right i mean debo's doing all of his work within 10 yards and behind the line of scrimmage kittle is right there mccaffrey just floats on wheel routes like it's the, the you're right the niners are set up to function with this guy because they, they have been functioning with the best version of this guy right in jimmy garoppolo like there's no play in their playbook that they can't run no Honestly, There's no I, throw that Jimmy can make that Brock can't. Now, Jimmy is an experienced player, so I'm not saying Brock's as good as him at all. I'm just saying I don't he's, think he's, he's not. I mean, no, of course. I just don't want that to be misinterpreted. But oh, by the way, thank you. Nate Sudfeld's on the Lions. That was uh, Jacob. Because remember they had to Jacob cut him. Eason. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jacob Eason, who was not, I don't think, good enough to win games with. Um. Thank you, thank you. But you know, I, I. I'd have to give him an A. I'd have to give him an A today. I thought he made a lot of winning throws in a game that was a one-score game late. Now, why did they win the game? Well, they won the game in part. We can talk about the game, too. We will, because Tua was bad for three quarters. But they don't win that game if they have less, if they have below-average quarterback play today. I don't think they beat the Dolphins with below-average. I know the final score, but... One thing you're going to be able to do with this guy, just looking at some of the numbers, he's a better athlete than Jimmy. Like when Jimmy was coming out of college, he basically ran a 5040. But like his, this guy ran a 48 and his like 10 and 20 yard splits aren't bad. This guy's not, obviously, when you're that small, because the one thing he does look small, right? Jimmy's not a big player, but this guy looks dramatically smaller than him. Yeah. Yeah. You can move him to me a little bit. And that's where I think we'll probably where Kyle, 
part of the reason why they had to keep him as the backup quarterback, or I guess technically the third stringer, was because he made enough plays in camp. All these guys run the offense that all the guys around the league, remember we talked about it, right, September 1st or right around there. It's like the Kevin O'Connells, the McVay, some of these guys, it, it's an easy one for them to claim. A guy that knows the offense and is pretty intriguing. And you saw it today, like he can kind of just run the offense. That they have excelled in this offense for a long time with average to below average armed guys. Yep. As long as you're smart and know what you're doing and can move. Because when you can move, one, one thing you would say about Jimmy, he's moved a little bit more this year than years past. But I would say movement is not what his game is predicated off, even in this offense, like rolling out and like really utilizing that stuff. Kind of like I would say that LaFleur, I mean, is Aaron Rodgers, one of the best players of all time, but Aaron's a much better athlete. Like, they really utilize that the last couple of years, like getting Aaron on the move and him just like, Jesus, Matt Stafford, when they got him, getting him to move. To me, if you can do some of that stuff with your weapons, which are just going to be shorter throws than like fucking throwing bombs, you're right. Maybe it actually isn't that crazy of a transition. To me, though, it just, anytime you have a first year, like for how poised he was, was really impressive. Like the pressure, the pressure on this guy now is it's pretty insane. Right. Yeah, I, I don't think somebody just asked, do you think there's less pressure on him? No, I think it only gets harder for him now. I think it's about to get harder for Brock, right? Because it's just, the, the, to me, it's always been this way. The difference between starters and backups is obviously there's physical talent differences. But any, like third string quarterbacks can come in and make a throw that Drew Brees can make. They can make one or two times. They can, the guys with strong arms, like if we put uh, Jacob Beeson on the field, he could make like a uh, Justin Herbert looking throw that if you only watch that one throw, you'd be like, holy smokes, man, this is. But it's about throw after throw after throw, series after series after series, week after week after week. Yeah, that's where backups get separated. So to your point, like when you say you're not saying, can you win a playoff game? You said, can you win three in a row? That's where it gets really hard. Can you can you win this division? It's just going to be hard. But road playoff games, not being able to hear. Game, yeah. Yep. But that's where like the one thing with his level of athleticism, I think it's two things, right? It's design plays where you get them on the move. And when you're his level of athlete, I think you have to be really, you have to be, uh, you have to know what you're seeing very early. Like Brock. And I think we saw it today. Purdy can run away from somebody if he decides very quickly that he's on the run. There was the play he rolled out to the left and threw it to McCaffrey, and Javon Holland came downhill and made that tackle on third down and one. It oh, made sweet. it third and oh, one. Sweet it was. And then the Niners went for it on fourth and one and got the sneak. But like that play, Purdy decided very early in that sequence, I got to get out of the pocket and go. Like if he decides immediately he's got to go, then he, he can go. He's, you know, Caleb Williams or Mahomes, these guys can decide at the last Josh moment. Allen Lamar. Yeah. He, so I'm with you. He's athletic, but he's got to see it. If he sees yeah. it, then he can get out. Um, he's athletic. What they look for in this offense, being able to move on boots and waggles and, you know, not run the ball like nudes? Trey Lance and nudes and nudes? naked snakes. You know, that's, he does bring that to the table. Yeah. Like to me, he's not just going to thrive in the pocket. It's going to be on some of those. I think one of the questions. Well, I, I think one thing you knew that this team was so well equipped. I do wonder, like, think who that defense, Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb now. I guess he hasn't been there the whole season, but like they had been going in practice against their offense. You know, Jalen Phillips now every all season long in OTAs against Mike McDaniel, and they do a lot of that stuff, right? Yeah. Movement. And they, I thought they were very well coached on what the Niners wanted to do, you know, with the quarterback. And obviously, how to get open. Yeah, because they got guys open. Um, I think one of the challenges for Purdy watching him today, one of my other takes on him is going to be like, is does he try? Because one, here's another thing you'd say about Garoppolo. He he rarely, especially as time went on, and this is where I would agree with him talking about maturity. He didn't try too often to make plays outside of himself. And you can see, like, here's Brock Purdy, who was a twelve thousand yard passer in college. He threw over eighty touchdowns. Big Twelve Offensive Player of the Year. Like he's got some playmaker gene in him, he thinks. And I, I do wonder, like, the more comfortable he gets, is he going to try to make a few plays that are outside of what the Niners want out of their quarterback? And is that good or bad? I don't know. But the one ball across the middle today was bad. Like athletic guys don't make that play, right? 
Strong yeah. arm guys don't make that. But play. that's part of a young quarterback just in general. Right, right. Yeah. And luckily, Jimmy, you would say, was still prone to do that. Not as much this year, but he had it in his back pocket. <laughs> he, uh, and he's thinking about this. Jimmy's 30 years old, and think how long it took him to, like, you know, really kind of look at Mac Jones. Mac Jones was a 15th overall pick. Kyle Shanahan wanted to take him 13th or third overall. I think he struggles with just like, bro, just hit the ground. Like, just live to fight another day. 